If you're trying to figure out how to do your eyeshadow, this video is for you. I could break it down, take it back to the basics. Learning how to do these three things is gonna allow you to be able to achieve any eyeshadow makeup look that you want. First things first, you know I'm bringing you affordable tutorials, so make sure you check out the description box so you can shop these products. I will have direct links to everything I used in this video down below. Now let's get into how to do your eyeshadow. Before you do your eyeshadow, I recommend doing your eyebrows. So your eyebrows is what shapes your face, whether you do your eyebrows at the beginning of your makeup routine or whether you do it after you finish your base, you wanna make sure your brows are done before you get into your eyeshadow look. The reason why I recommend this is because typically I clean up my eyebrows with concealer. And so if you clean it up under your brows with concealer and you're a beginner at this eyeshadow thing, it may not be easy to blend that concealer into the eyeshadow look that you already create. So I like to go ahead and just get my brows done, them concealed, and be ready to start with like a blank canvas. My other tip would be to do your eyeshadow look first. The reason why I recommend doing your eyeshadow look first is because sometimes you may have fallout from your eyeshadow palettes when you're doing your looks. And what that basically means is when you're dusting your eyeshadow on your lids, you may have eyeshadow particles like kind of falling on the rest of your face. And if your foundation and concealer and all of that is already done, sometimes it can be a a little difficult to clean that up especially if you're a beginner so if it's your first time trying eyeshadow or if you're just trying to learn how to up your eyeshadow game this is a perfect tutorial for you so I've been practicing this eyeshadow look in a lot of different ways and I feel like if you master this technique, your possibilities are endless as far as creating different eyeshadow looks for any occasion. So let's get started. My eyebrows are already done and they are concealed. Go ahead and type brows in the comments below if you guys are interested in a detailed brow tutorial. Cause if you know, you know. I'ma always have my brows snatched. One thing that I like to do before I do my eyeshadow looks is to prime my eyelids. The purpose of priming your lids is one, to make your eyeshadow be brighter, stand out more, and be a little bit more opaque than just applying to your bare skin, but it also gives your eyeshadow something to grip to. Thirdly, I would say if you have like discoloration or hyperpigmentation on your lids where your lids may be darker or more red or whatever shade they are, are, you can cancel that out by applying some concealer as your eyeshadow primer. I recommend concealer because one, it's already around your shade range and I just feel like it's a great grip for eyeshadows. So we're gonna start off with the e.l.f. 16 hour camo concealer. I believe this is a great concealer. Um, they do have a hydrating version as well. So you kind of have options on whatever your skin's needs are. Um, so I'm just gonna take the doe foot applicator and apply just a good little bit to cover the center of my lids. And then I'm gonna take a brush to blend this out across my lids. My brush of choice is the AOA Studio F19 brush, and I will link the brushes that I use in this tutorial in the description box below so you guys can shop. I do believe this is a very good brush set, and it's pretty affordable. So this brush set has 20 brushes for $20, so essentially you're paying $1 per brush, which, girl, it's giving Dollar Tree, honestly. So I wanted to be sure that I provided you guys some affordable options. Now they may not be in the physical drugstore, but they are going to be affordable for you. So if you're looking to save money, I got you. So I'm literally just patting this concealer all across my lid from where my eye kind of goes into the bend of my nose all the way out to the edge in the end of my brows. As you can see, I kind of have a blank slate on my lids. If you're trying to master your eyeshadow routine, I wanna prep you guys so you can avoid messing up. Um, of course, it's gonna take time and practice for you to master your routine, but I love finding different ways, different tips, tricks, hacks that will help me make applying my eyeshadow easier. One of those things is an eyeshadow shield. Now, if you just wanna go and find something in your house, I have used like regular scotch tape before to do this. Um, so if you're looking for something in the house and you wanna try and figure this out without buying these, 
use at your own discretion um, but these eyeshadow shields just basically go from the corner of your eye I typically line it up from the corner of my eye to the corner of my eyebrow and then I just kind of stick it down so it is sticky what this is gonna do is create like an angle here so your eyeshadow doesn't bleed down too far and you don't have to do that much cleaning up when it comes to your eyeshadow. This is also a great like aid for people who want to do like a wing liner because as long as you got the top straight, the bottom is gonna be straight from this eyeshadow shield. So I like to go ahead and apply this and then what I like to do next, you want to make sure your concealer isn't creasing. So before you go in with your eyeshadow, you want to make sure you blend it out again. And there are many ways to do your eyeshadow. This is just one way that I think if you learn how to do this, you can grow so much from this baseline tutorial or this baseline technique. I typically don't like to spend money on things that aren't going to work for me. And I have not spent a whole bunch of money testing out different drugstore eyeshadow palettes, but I do know which palettes and which eyeshadow formulas work best for me. And one of those brands is Morphe. So if you've never heard of Morphe, Morphe has like great quality eyeshadows pretty much across the board. Their products are chef's kiss as well as their brushes i was in ulta and i came across this eyeshadow palette which is only 20 dollars. this is the morphe matte essentials eyeshadow palette and this is the warm version so if you prefer warm colors this is going to be the palette for you i'm recommending it because there's options for anyone no matter your skin tone so you can use the warm palette or they also have a cool version of this palette and it has all the different mattes that you would need to create a simple eyeshadow look. I am gonna be using a few brushes from a $10 brush set that I got from Shop Miss A, and I will also link those in the description box below. When it comes to eyeshadow, the first thing I like to do is to apply my transition shade. So your transition shade is typically gonna be in the crease of your eye, which is right in here, and it's gonna transition like your brows to whatever eyeshadow look you're doing so it's gonna serve as a transition between colors and so typically I like to go with something that is close to my skin tone if not a little just a little shade darker I'm gonna use this color right here which is the shade Terry and I'm using my AOA studio this is the E135 brush it's just a dome shaped brush pretty fluffy but not too big so I typically like to tap a couple times in the powder i don't like swish around too much because i want to pack it on the brush and then i like to pack this in the crease before i diffuse it so we're just going to stamp it you see and usually you can see like if this is going to be too dark or not this is very pigmented okay press into the eyeshadow versus like sweeping around in it because that's gonna cause like kickback in your pan which is going to be that dustiness of eyeshadow particles just all across your palette and then i'm going to stamp this into my crease and stamping means you're just like pressing it in as you would a stamp I wanted to make this tutorial so you can feel a little bit more educated when you're watching other makeup tutorials so you can know what they're talking about. So it is gonna be a little chatty, but it's gonna be all the information that you might need. I don't know if you can see like the extra little kickback here in the pan. That's what kickback means. It means like when you put your brush in it, you get some kickback, you get some dust in the palette, okay? Now, down here where you see eyeshadow, if you see any eyeshadow um, particles dropping, that's called fallout. So when you apply it to your eye, it's the excess shadow that falls out onto your face. So after it's stamped on, I like to go in and do windshield wiper motions. So windshield wiper motions is literally making the brush go like this, just like a windshield wiper does on your car. So you just wanna go back and forth And I like to stay low 
typically the way I like my eyeshadow, I don't like my eyeshadow going all the way into my brow. Um, I just think it looks a little harsh if it goes up that high. So I try to concentrate it right there in that crease. And then sometimes I do smaller windshield wiper motions just to blend out as best I can. And if you feel like your eyeshadow isn't blending well, you can go back and forth between brushes. So I can go back with that F19 brush and without applying any extra product or anything, this was the brush I used to blend out the concealer. I can just do that right up under my brows to just help diffuse that eyeshadow. You see what I'm saying? And you want to start with a little and build it up. You can always build it up. It's a little bit harder to take away. So I want you guys to use this tutorial when you're like practicing your makeup so you can, you know, get in your makeup bag and learn how to do a little eyeshadow. So boom. Once you pretty much have like your crease covered in like a median shade, I like to go ahead and do my other eye. I found it easier to go ahead and do the other lid step by step versus completing one whole eyeshadow look because sometimes, girl, I'll forget what I did and then I'll be trying to replicate it over here. So I like to go ahead and as soon as I do my transition shade on this side, I'll go ahead and do it on this side. One of the main goals when doing your eyeshadow is to have a beautiful gradient and a gradient is just when two colors blend into each other. So you wanna avoid like harsh lines and things like that. You really want it to blend. So you may have to take some time doing them windshield wiper motions and just keep going. And when you're trying to get it to blend better, that doesn't mean you need to add additional product. You can just go back and forth between brushes and then keep diffusing it. Another tip that I learned, if you hold your brush closer to the brush tip, you're gonna be more concentrated. It's gonna be more opaque and more harsh. If you hold your brush closer towards the end, that's gonna allow you to diffuse the shadow more. So I just wanted to mention that so you guys can know how your hand placement on the brush can change the application of your eyeshadow. And also, this is something that I thought about the other day that people starting off might not know. When you do your eyeshadow, I recommend using the hand that you write with, so your dominant hand. I'm left-handed, I know it's flipped on the camera, but I'm left-handed, so I use my left hand to blend out my eyeshadow. I use my left hand on my right eye to blend out my eyeshadow. It's probably gonna be a little bit easier for you to learn how to do your makeup using your dominant hand versus trying to do things with your non-dominant hand. So now that we have our transition shade applied, we wanna move into our crease shade. So our crease shade is gonna be what gives our eyes dimension. It's gonna be the darkest shade typically unless you're doing a smoky eye. I'm gonna use this AOA Studio E136 brush. It's a little bit smaller but still dome shaped on the end. And I like a smaller brush for my crease shades so I can concentrate it in the crease. Because if you use a big brush and you're trying to put it in the crease, it's gonna spread way more than if you use a smaller brush. So I'm gonna use this brown shade, which is the shade round. Round, 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 crown without the C. And I'm just gonna press in it. And I like to start off light, like I said. So we're gonna stamp it into the outer corner of the eye. So let me just give you some verbiage. This right here is your inner corner. This right here is your outer corner. This in the center is typically referred to as your lid. Your crease, again, is where your lid creases in like right, right up under your brow bone basically is where your crease is. If you hear the term hooded eyes, that typically means when you open your eyes fully, there's a portion of your eyelid that you cannot see. And I have slightly hooded eyes. Um, so you'll see later in this video how I optimize my lid space so you can actually see the color that I'm putting on. This right here is your inner corner, your waterline, your lash line is the top. Lower lashes on the bottom, lashes 
on top. Um, and then typically your brow bone is referring to this area, the bone area of your brow that's like in the arch. So that when people say your brow bone, that's where they're talking about. So again, going back in with this deeper brown, I'm just concentrating it on the outer corner of my eyes. And I'm just stamping it on right now. I'm gonna go ahead and stamp it on on this side as well. Cause we wanna make our eyeshadow looks cousins, sisters. They might not be twins, but they related. And then once you stamp it on, you can start doing your windshield wiper motions, but it's gonna be lower on the eye. I'm not gonna drag it up above my crease. It's gonna be lower. So typically when I blend out my outer corner shade or my crease shade, I do not go above the crease. Cause if you start traveling above the crease, it's kind of like when you try to do your eyeliner and it just keep getting thicker and thicker every time you try to fix it. Mm -mm. Once I feel like I have a good amount in my crease, I like to go back in with the brush that I previously used, which was the E135. And I like to blend them together. Just blend that outer corner inward. Now you can drag it out if you want to because we do have these eyeshadow shields on. That's gonna give you more of a winged look. And if you don't want it to be darker on the edges, you can just skip this step. The next step that I recommend is going to be to cut out your crease. Now, you could do this multiple ways. You can use a Q-tip in micellar water and just clean up right there your lid space so you can apply a lighter color or a shimmer. Um, but I like to do this with concealer. And I, like I said, I've practiced this eyeshadow look for the past month or so, and my eyes just look amazing every time I do it. And so that's gonna be basically cutting the crease with concealer. You can skip this step if you don't want a super defined cut crease. From here, you can move forward to just applying your lid shade and just make sure you blend it out well on your eyes. But I think this look looks a lot more clean and a lot more intentional when you cut the crease with concealer. What does cutting the crease mean? It basically means just drawing a line that separates the eyeshadow that you've already put down thus far and whatever you're gonna do on your eyelid. Typically, I like to take a concealer brush, but today we're gonna take the E113 brush, and this is just a rounded, flat brush. This one's a little bit thicker, but I think a round brush helps you create that cut crease a little bit more easily. Again, taking my e.l.f. concealer, and I'm just gonna brush the doe foot to get some product on. And you don't need a crazy amount of concealer when you do this. So what I like to do is look down and I take my concealer brush and I first just stamp it right where my inner corner is. So right where my eye starts. And then I like to just go ahead and kind of do my windshield wiper motion because it if you do it like you're drawing an arch you're going to create that nice cut crease and then i blend that concealer down to my lash line and just blend it pretty much towards the outer corner you don't want to take it all the way to the corner unless you're going for that look, but you wanna pretty much take it across your lid. So as you can see, I have a nice arch here that cut my crease. And then I blended out the concealer to cover my lid. What this does is again, it gives you that blank slate for you to apply whatever shade that you wanna apply on your lid and for it to pop. Now, as you can see, when I open my eyes, you can still see the full lid shade. The more hooded your eyes are, the higher up you'll need to take 
your arch. So I did go a little bit above my crease to ensure that I have visibility when you open your eyes so they can see that lid color, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and again, do the other side. And so once I drag that across my lids, before I apply my lid shade, I like to go in with, again, that same brush that I used in my crease and in my outer corner and just kind of diffuse the edges of the concealer. Just going back and forth right there where the concealer meets the outer corner. I have not applied any more eyeshadow yet, but I like to do this so it's a smooth transition between the lid shade and the outer corner. So I've been enjoying doing a lighter shade on my lids lately, whether that be like a peach or a nude shade. So I think I wanna take this shade right here, which is the shade Stretch and apply it on my lids. So I'm gonna take my AOA Studio. This is the E111 brush. I've been enjoying this brush to do my lid shade the past month. Um, it is rounded, but it's kind of rounded at an angle, which just helps me get right there into that crease that we created with the concealer. So I'm just pressing into the shade, and then what I'm gonna do is press the shade right on top of that concealer. And I am doing a little bit of a press and swipe motion because I want to maintain the integrity of the cut crease that we made. And then you just want to pack it on. And pack it on is just another version of stamping and building up the product. So I know at this moment you like, girl, it look a little crazy. Take that crease brush, no additional product, and just clean up above and clean up the outer corner. Now we are gonna come back and add a little bit more of the crease shade but I wanna go ahead and make sure I do the other eye. So I will go back into that transition shade that I used, which was the shade Knit, and just blend it on the outer corner. And I am using the 135 brush. I don't like to go past my pupil, so if you look straight, and your pupils in the center, typically my outer corner is gonna be everything outside of where my pupil sits. Then going back in with the E136 brush with that darker shade just to amplify those outer corners. And then again, you just bounce between your brushes until you get a smooth gradient. So that's pretty much it for the eyeshadow look. From here, you have endless possibilities. You can apply a shimmer shade, you can apply glitter, like whatever you wanna do. If you learn how to place these three positions, if you know how to place your transition shade, your crease shade, and your lid shade, you can create any eyeshadow makeup look across the board. Like that's a great starting place. So master this and then just play around with the colors. They don't have to be, you know, your skin tone. They don't have to be um, particularly these neutral mattes. You can find palettes that have shimmer shades in them. Again, I would recommend Morphe eyeshadow palettes. They're really good. Real quick, I'm gonna show you guys the eyeliner thing before I peel off the eyeshadow shields. I'm gonna take this e.l.f. liquid eyeliner to do my eyes. Liquid eyeliner can be a little tricky, so you wanna be careful or try something with maybe a felt tip first, but you just wanna get as close to the lash line as possible. And don't be afraid to go slow. I feel like a lot of times we try to get it done quickly and then we mess it up versus if we would have just took our time, we would have been fine. So as you get out here, you just want to kind of drag it to your eyeshadow shield. I like to go backwards from the outer corner 
like from the eyeshadow shield into my lid to create wings and then fill it in like that. And I don't take my wing like really far into my lid. Like I like to keep my lid liner pretty thin and close to my lid, close to my lash line. And then again, I go here. I just kind of drag it with a light hand towards my pupil. So then after I do this, I like to go ahead and peel it before it fully dries. And when you peel it back, you have a nice clean a nice clean line for your eyeshadow and your eyeliner. So from here, you can apply lashes, do mascara, whatever you want to do. That's pretty much what I do to get a beautiful eyeshadow look. So this is the finished look after I applied my lashes, I did my base makeup, and because you guys always ask and child, I never be remembering the lip combo. I used the lip bar. This is one of their liquid lipsticks, and this is in the shade Savage. I used this to pretty much just line my lips. And then on the inside, I actually used that same e.l.f. concealer. I've been loving the concealer lip hack vibe. Like, it gives me, like, the perfect ombre look that meshes well with my makeup. All in all, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful in your makeup journey. If you're interested in more content like this, please let me know because I want to do like a beginner makeup masterclass with you guys. So if that's something you're interested in, comment hashtag zoom in the comment section below and make sure you join my email list. If you join my email list, that is where I will be sending out all information when we launch this masterclass. So if you want to learn how to do your makeup you're new to this and you're trying to figure out like girl what do i do to get my face beat like that these videos in that class is going to be perfect for you so if you're watching this far that means you've been enjoying this tutorial and shout out to you for watching the full video go ahead and subscribe if you're not subscribed girl because i'm gonna make sure i give you all the tips so you can make sure your face is beat, okay? So lastly, if you've never seen my content before, make sure you check up here for my beginner makeup playlist. There's tons of videos there to help you in your makeup journey in learning how to do your makeup. You already know I love y'all and never forget, be kind, be true, and be you. Tipple. Bye. Yeah, slim rush it.